राज नाम है मेरा नाम तो सुना ही होगा वेल माय मदर गिव मी अ वेरी फेमी नाम बट माय लाइफ हैज बीन नथिंग शॉर्ट ऑफ एन एक्चुअल मूवी यू नो आज मैं जब सुनता हूं आई लिसन टेक नॉलेज दिस ब्लॉकचेन दिस एआई दिस यू नो गाइस आई नेवर सॉ अ कंप्यूटर टिल 1986 I never studied technology. I am an MBA student, like all of you at Mail. That's right. Nothing. But it's all the passion during my journey from 1986. I will take it. Let's not go behind it. Neither, but some people will get put down. Okay, yeah. I was born in '62. Okay. So that's now 59 years of beautiful journey. With no idea what the hell I'll do right at the beginning, and I'm going to tell you my story because it's inspirational not just for me, for you, but for all the people who actually made it inspirational. It's my journey, it's my movie, it's my screenplay. Like a lot of us in school, who really likes studies out here? Let's have a show of hands. Who really loves studies? Anybody love studies? I don't see a single. I see only two girls. That three. Nobody. Four. Yes. Now they're playing follow the leader. So we got four, five here. Five, six people. I, I hated studies. I'll be very honest. Mm, hated them. And you know what? Just to say that, okay, I mean, school में पढ़ाई करने नहीं. I started taking part in sports. All the sports. Football, hockey, cricket, everything. My wife, my mother was saying, इस चीज़ का यार घर में time pass करने चल करे कुछ तो बढ़ने का. I took part in football. I joined my school team. Very happy. I came home, told my mother. After a few weeks, hockey, hockey team, very good. But one problem was still there. In hockey and football, after 70 minutes or 90 minutes, they were putting back in class. <laughs> I said, "Yeah, it's a wrong sport. I'm not going to play. Wrong place." <laughs> Then cricket. Hey, that is the thing. That time. There were not even that time we used to play 20 over matches. What we are playing today, and I said yes, ये खेलेंगे. I started playing cricket. In I think I was 11 years old when I started playing, and I became damn good at it. You know why? Because cricket takes you out of class for the whole damn day, <laughs> and you get the maximum female following if you play cricket. That's religion in India, and we had. I was at St. Columbus High School. All boys school. Right next to us was this girls school, CJ and Conrad Jays and Marys, and we had a common ground. And why do you think I would play cricket? Because we would enjoy hitting sixes into the girls school. All the boys were very happy also because they would have to fetch the ball from the girls school. We used to have bets that time who would hit the maximum sixes at CJ. Anyways, start. When I was 12 years old, I got a chance to play for Punjab. I excel. I became school team captain, everything, and that gave me an excuse. Whenever I didn't want to start a certain class, I would say, "Net practice. Net practice means job. You are forgiven, and you would never be failed. Nobody will fail you. Nobody will fail the school captain for God's sake." Right. Anyways, I went back, played for Punjab, and the very first day I played for Punjab. I was a bowler, by the way. I modeled myself on Kapil Dev, and I said, "Ah, that's the guy. We all want to be Kapil Dev at that time." I played my first match. At half time, I got a call. I got a call. I lost my father. I lost my father on the very first day I was playing for my state. 1970 summer, God even knows where. I was 12 years old. I, I didn't know what to do. My mother spoke to me on the phone and she said, "Pita, you play. Papa will be proud. I play. I took four wickets in the match. It was against Jammu and Kashmir. I remember that. That was my first brush with being resilient. The resilience was in my mother, who allowed me to do what I did. The resilience was in me because I kept doing what I did. I looked up only once, thinking that maybe somewhere he's seeing me, and I came back." And I became a, I had a very successful stint in my cricketing aspect. That most people don't know about that. Why? Because I have no more known point. Talk about this part now. I played Ranji Trophy. I played Santosh, Diodhar. I made one mistake though. 
I left in 1982. I stopped playing cricket in 82. You know why? Who won the bloody World Cup in 83? India. And who became famous after that? All the cricketers. Who got left out? Raj Kapoor. No, I didn't join films. I still didn't remember where I am. But 83 was a very defining moment. I said, I'll, anyways. Otherwise, if nothing else, I would become an ideal commentator or some smart comments and get paid for it also. I get not, nothing like that now. By the way, I still coach kids. That's the only thing I do. Anyways. That was the first phase of my screenplay, so to speak. The second phase of my screenplay, I'll fast forward it now to my MBA days. In my MBA days, I said, I had no clue what I wanted to become. I had absolutely no clue. Like a lot of us were during those days. Now we are more focused and I'm glad. Those days, I, I ended brilliantly in my MBA. I was from, I'm from Bombay, Somayas. And I did my PG, PGDM and I got through. And I got a lot of job offer letters from Tata, Tata Steel, Tata T, Tata Shipping, etc. Because Tata used to recruit big time there. I first said, wow, Tata sounds great name. I went and took up the job. The first day of the job, he put me on an old rickety desk, put one typewriter in front of me and said, this is your job. I see, I didn't sign up for this. And mind you, I didn't sign up for standing in the circle either for that matter. I'm a very restless soul. <laughs> so anyways, come back. At the end of the day, I typed out a beautiful one page which he told me to practice and that page was my resignation letter. <laughs> my first day at Tata Sons, first letter I typed, resignation letter. Why? I couldn't sit there. I was finding it so boring. I saw some old people sitting here. I saw an old fan on top. And I said, that's not my idea of fun. I don't want to be a management trainee in this place. I didn't know Tata Sons had a big reputation at that time. I thought it was just another great company, but that's it. The next day, everybody asked me, what are you going to do? I said, I'm going to join Taj Group. <laughs> Taj Group? They are bitter on like, yeah. I said, I'm going to be a management trainee there. I've got an offer from there. All right? Okay. I joined the Taj Group. Now, everybody asked me at that time, why the hell? And I'm talking about the 80s, when hotel management was not really considered the in thing to do. Now it's a great thing, great career. Those days, it wasn't. When I went there, they asked me, yeah, I'll why did you choose this damn career? I told all my friends, we were having a lunch one day, and I said, listen guys, you're working in some boring old office. I'm working in a five-star environment. Management tree. You're, you're, you're working with a lot of old fossils and old people sitting down, they're very boring characters. I said, I have all the beautiful people around me. And I said, I will network here, because the best of people come here. And by the way, that was my Strategy to get a job, by the way, a great job. Don't make, don't let it be yours. But in those days, it was acceptable, okay? And I said, you know what? I'm going to get a green card, hold a girl right here in Taj, marry her, and go to the United States. <laughs> that was my career path. That was my career path. Unfortunately, it didn't happen that way. I couldn't get any girl who had a green card. All the girls I liked or either didn't have a green card or gave me a slap, either of the two. So I didn't get that, but I got a very good friend out there, Martin Kirkmaster. He was a black American. He was very happy with what I was doing. He, my happiness, the happiness was, this guy cries a lot. He doesn't sit down in one place, he keeps trying. Like Vikram, you kept trying, kept picking up the pieces, kept taking the opportunities, and that's again the moral of the story. You take the opportunities. He offered me a job in a supermarket in the United States way back in 82 or 83. I said, I'll do it. He said, you're not going to ask how much you're going to get? No way, I'm going to US, man. He said, right, I want to go there. That was my dream at that time. I didn't get the green card girl. I still don't have. So I went there to the United States, and he, within five or 10 days, I was in the supermarket, and I met another gentleman. His name was Brian Johnson. And he says, hey, Raj, I used to tell him very hey, Raj, how would you like to sit and work on computers? I said, I had never seen a computer till that time. He made me actually sit down in front of one and say, see, if you like it, take it. And there started my second phase, third phase, getting into the technology space with no idea what is technology, no idea of programming, no idea of coding. 
Today, I program in 18 languages. I work on all the blockchain platforms. I work in 18 countries, all on technology. None of them know that I actually just took it for a lark. I actually did it for a lark. Moral of the story simple, guys. You can do what you want to do. Don't stop yourself. Follow your heart. Don't follow the charts. The charts tell you something different all the time. Always follow your heart. Then came my third, fourth phase of my journey of my screenplay, as I would say, is when I actually stumbled upon the technology that's going to change all our future, whether we like it or not. I started in 2010, it was around that time I was in the United States. And I finished, my, I finished an assignment, and the guy says, Hey Raj, I'm going to pay you tonight, but I'll pay you in coin. I said, Yeah, coin kya hai? So I said, You pay me cash, boss, I need to pay my bills. He says, No, you take coin. 2010 was a defining moment for me. Two things happened that time. While I was on the verge of a very successful project, I lost my wife. I lost my wife in 2010 on the Bombay Pune Highway. She was traveling, blindsided by a, car, by a truck. I lost my life. And I was about to sign one of the largest contracts of my life in the United States, and we were to shift there. That was 2010. The resilience there was not mine only, it was my daughter's. My daughter had just got admission in the Boston University on her merit with a scholarship. She was a Dhirubhai Amani student in Delhi, in Bombay. And in 2010, August was when she got admission. We shifted there. December 29th, I lost my wife. We were to spend New Year there and start a new life out there. That's resilience. My daughter, she was heartbroken. I was heartbroken, but we came back. My daughter today is one of the most successful writers in Walt Disney. You must have seen some of her programs. Breaking Bad. Who's seen Breaking Bad? There you go. My daughter was one of the writing team in that. Yeah. Who's seen Big Bang Theory, Series 10? My daughter is part of that. And she did all that when we were doing the last rites of a mom. She was doing that. I told her, go ahead, go fly. 2010, second defining moment. I was paid my first fees in Bitcoin. Yes, sir. 2010, I was paid 600 bitcoins. 600 bitcoins. That I had no idea what the hell I'm going to do with it. But today, I haven't sold any. <laughs> Whether you call it resilience, you call it stupidity, you call it a good gut feeling, but guys, I love it. And you know what? We're doing something with it now. I said, let's do something with it. Kaisi Kamana is not everything. I sold some of it recently even across 60K per Bitcoin. Dollars, yeah. Right? I sold that. And you know what? That, uh, in 2010 again, uh, what I also did was, I also started a foundation of teaching the girl child. I said, I'm earning well. I'm doing damn good. I'm earning in coins now. And then I started realizing, all right, it's pretty, really good. We started a foundation. My wife and I, I married again, by the way. I married again. And we decided to have a foundation, which we said we'll have it for the girl child. For the girl child, we want girl children to be more inclusive in technology. We found that there are very few. 10 years, we have both contributed 75% of what we earn for educating the girl child. And we don't take a single rupee donation. We don't take it because we believe the girl child has it in her to do much more than we allow her to do it. So there, what we did. And today we have 1,736 girls under that foundation, all from within our society. Our maid servants, our drivers, their references, that's what they study. That was another part of the point, by the way. We put a lot of point in that. And now, in 2019 came COVID, and everybody in the world said, everything's gone. But technology never went. Technology really showed us how resilient life can be. All of us have actually been there. Virtual you know, studies, virtual classes. That's part of resilience. It's part of how we adapted. It's all how we adapt. We adapted. And 2019 onwards, 
two years, I've come a long way. As they say, there's a Virginia, Virginia slip that you've come a long way, baby. And I would say that for myself and my team. We now have our programs running in 14 countries across the world. Indian programs written by Indians running in the United States, in Canada, in Australia, Malaysia, in so many places, all on blockchain and crypto. Mind you, a 59-year-old man talks to millennials who are 17 and 18 and says, guys, they, you are the future. And they're the ones that everybody associates with Bitcoin. Well, look at this guy, the oldest man. I'm called grandfather of blockchain, by the way. That's my title. Which recently got replaced by an American guy whom we did a great project with. And he, did, he must have made a lot of money in that. So he says, you're not grandfather, you're godfather of blockchain. I said, all right, more films to me, more part of my screenplay, guys. I've enjoyed this journey, my friends. I've enjoyed the journey of being a person who knew nothing of technology, learned on the way, adapted on the way, and that's all what all of us can do, and we are all doing that. I am not me, I'm you. I'm a bit of you, I'm a bit of you, I'm a bit of the students. I still learn, I'm 59 and I still learn. I still learn every day of my life, and that's gonna be lifelong learning. You're gonna pass out of the school, yes. This is an institution, it'll never go anywhere. You will go somewhere, but the institution will remain. Remember, the institution is what gives you everything. It's the space which I've taken blockchain is an institutional technology. It has the power to tokenize, to monetize, to make lives. Are you going to be part of it? You decide. Enjoy it. Enjoy while the going is good. Last screenplay of my life. This year, not only did I get uh, an award for being the most influential blockchain and uh, crypto, I don't like the word crypto all the time though, but because whenever I talk about blockchain, everybody every asks me, Sir, Bitcoin is not the This is not the right, it's not the same thing, it's not even interchangeable, but people do that. This year, not only that, we've been chosen by the government of India by, as the de facto consulting for everything in blockchain, fintech, DeFi, and DLT technology. So that's been a big journey over the last two years for a person who knew nothing about technology. Today we talk about all technologies of the world and I'm glad to be part of the journey. Technology is going to be the most resilient part of life in our, in our lives as we go further. Not, in, not, not only today, tomorrow and for all of us. All of you who've seen movies, this has been a little screenplay of my life. One day as Vikram said, all of you will be here telling me your screenplays of their life. Thank you guys for having me here. Thank you.